My name is Victor Vigiani, and I'm here at the Alien Cosmic Expo, and I'm doing uh, some lecturing myself on Sunday, and I'm also helping out with emceeing and introducing guests and so on. I, I think the intensity behind the public belief in this, there, there's more and more people in the public domain who are beginning to be attracted to this. It's almost like a magnet. They're being drawn to it. And I'm saying that because of the radio show with Richard Serrett, number one, and B, just interacting with people who I know that aren't or haven't been involved in all of this. They seem to be a little bit more leaning towards the issue. Like, tell me more about this. I, you know, I, rather than being skeptical or ridiculing the whole thing, I think the level of, of ridicule and, 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 uh, and uh, skepticism is really reduced, not only just among the general public, but among a lot of journalists that, I, that I've been speaking to. There's, uh, there's people in, in the Toronto Star now writing about this stuff, and, uh, and not in a flippant way. They're, they're dead serious about it. Uh, there was an article in the, in the Star, I think about three weeks ago, and uh, it, was, it talked about, if aliens come, what are we going to do? And that would never have occurred uh, four or five years ago. So I think there's kind of an openness that's, that's somehow been created by the energy that the conferences like this have, have generated, and somehow it's uh, just boiled over into the, into the public mainstream press and uh, into, I guess, the public domain. People are a little bit more open towards the whole thing. And I might add, too, uh, CBC uh, became, stepped out of their shoes for a little while. Anna Maria Tremonti of The Current covered the, uh, uh, the Pentagon release of the, the UFO investigation, the $22 million investigation. She interviewed uh, Nick Pope and, and two other people uh, on December 20th of, of last year. And for the current to do that uh, was a major step, major, big step. And uh, I'm, I'm going to blow my own horn for a second here because when I, when I found out about the whole thing, about the whole release of the Pentagon stuff, I said, you know what? I think it's about time that uh, the current deal with this. So I wrote a letter to Anna Maria Tremonti and her, and her producer and an email. I said, listen, you, it's, it's, this is big news. The Pentagon is coming out. They spent $22 million in the program. I really, it's a prime story. It's, it's magnetic. It, you've got to be drawn to this. So I, I wrote the letter on December the 18th to, to them, and uh, the 19th, I got a call from the producer, Josh Blotch is his name. He's the producer of The Current, and he wanted to find out what's going on, and who should we interview, and you know why is it important? The next day, on the Tuesday, they covered it. They, they, had, Nick, they had Nick Pope on, plus two other people. Uh, Seth Shotstack was on, which kind of disappointed me, but she, she wanted to balance things. But she thoroughly investigated, went into it with all of these people, and didn't ask the silly questions. And that she asked, as she does, as, as she's good at, she asked the really pointed questions about it. And for CBC to do that, I think it really reflects the fact that things are changing. I mean, it's, it's come, it's, you know, almost uh, glacial pace, but still, it's changing. And uh, that, that's, that's how I think it's really kind of moving forward. He said, I don't think full disclosure is ever going to happen. Full disclosure. They'll always keep something back. But the fact of the matter is that we have to create a common discourse, just like we're talking about, uh, for example, uh, you know, the, the, the Trump era, the new, the new government in the White House. I mean, how dastardly it is. Everybody's talking about it. If we begin to talk about the UFO issue at that level, on an everyday level, to me, our job is done. As soon as that happens, then I think you're going to see a massive change among people and saying, listen, with the implications of the UFO issue, not just the reality of it, the implications of, 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 of you know, the free energy and, and what will happen to the fossil fuel industry if that happens, and all of those kind of side, sidebar notations about what this issue is all about. And I think that's, that's what's going to happen next. I think that's where it's going to go. If we can create the commonality to develop that discourse and so that everybody's talking about this stuff. Like, Right now, I would venture to say there's nobody on this airport strip right now having the conversation that you and I are having, other than this hotel. What we want to do is reverse that. We want to make sure or ensure that it's okay for people everywhere, in parking lots, on, on trains, on buses, in restaurants, to say, this is not about UFO, this is really interesting. I wonder what it all really, really means. And once you do that, um, then it'll just roll downhill from there. That's my hope. We are um, developing letters to send to the Prime Minister and to the Minister of, of Defense. 
So we've already sent those letters. We got a response from the Minister of Defence, by the way. I invited him to the conference and he said, well, no, thank you very much, which is fairly well typical. But what we're trying to do is make an inroad with the Canadian government, because I feel that, forget about disclosure for a second, but the chances of them acknowledging us or acknowledging the issue are expanding. And because of the naivete of the Canadian media, they don't really have too many qualms about dealing with this in, in a really superficial way. But we want to get them more involved in it. So if we can get citizens to write their members of parliament, that's what we're going to be giving everybody a letter. Well, you just stick it in an envelope, put the address on it, you need a stamp, mail it to your MP. We need people that are in this room to be energized for action. We, we, we can't have them sitting in the chairs listening to all these wonderful uh, lectures and not doing anything. Okay, And as, a, as, a, as an educator, one of the things I do as a, as a teacher is motivate people to, to act. And that's one of the things that we have, that's the next step. Getting ordinary people to say, yeah, I've got a role in this, I have a responsibility to act. I just can't come here, pay my money, sit in seat and, and be entertained. I've got to do something about it.